afternoon I'm here in beautiful Tucson Arizona today to talk about my 61 Buick LeSabre 61 Buicks as all cars from GM 61 were pretty much the end of the era end of the jet age era and end of the era of Harley Earl designs who gave us the jet age styling 61 they got rid of the fins they got rid of some of the uh, unnecessary length of the cars. The 61 being about 5 to 7 inches shorter than the 60. But the one thing they kept for us was that beautiful canopy top. Yes, the bubble top. Last year, the bubble top. If you look at the trim down the sides, it almost looks like a very subtle as far as the trim compared to the years prior 58 which was drowned in chrome and 59 and 60 still had a mountain of it but come 61 pretty much you have these amazing tucked in bumpers they almost look like something you'd see out of a custom shop today and the way how they built in these body lines and the fenders just to complement that is amazing and to go into that jet age styling that GM was famous for, the rear taillights almost look like afterburners with the swooping lines coming down from that trim that ends at that pointy nose. The families dubbed this car the cruise missile, partially because of this design, but also because of the drivetrain. We will get into that in a second. However, for me, Having to serve in the Air Force, I uh, was greeted every day by an F-86 Sabre jet. So the Sabre, you can see a lot of those characteristics that GM was trying to capture with, the, uh, with this car. In, in my opinion, especially with this Sabre versus the previous ones. If you look at the nose, it comes to a point... But the grill gets brought in like the air index of an F-86 Sabre jet. And then you look at the big canopy again for 61. It's a little bit taller than the 5960. But the body lines are a little bit lower to give it more of that bubble look. Which is why they always dub the 61s the bubble top. When you look into the interior in the back here. Speaking of space age, there's a uh, little black square. Everyone thinks it's for a satellite radio. No, that's for a GPS sending unit. So we could still use those factory gauges. Got a Dakota digital water temperature there. And if you look at that headliner, that's pretty much still the factory headliner. Kind of cool to see. The radio is well today lies the new computer for the ls3 l680 power plant that now rockets the cruise missile so as i was saying earlier the outside has the jet age styling but this engine bay well that just puts the jet in it it's a ls3 with this recently uh had a new cam lifters installed uh put a new gm tune in it it's backed up by a 6l80 highway driving is phenomenal it drives like a buick uh, uh what can i say one hand on the wheel 80 miles an hour with the ac blowing one at about 195 and 100 degree arizona temperatures can't beat it that's the uh, vintage air there. It's all polished. Um, previous owner had the car since uh, the early 90s. And when it came to the power plant and some of these added touches, there was really no expense spared. Uh, some of the other touches that I've done is I put Billistine shocks, pick out some of the gravity that was in the car from when it was originally purchased. Put the uh, Alpine Bluetooth audio with hand-free uh, hands phone. And these awesome one-off 
uh, hot rods by Boyd custom wheels that were custom made just for this car. 20 by 20s in the back, 18s in the front, wrapped in nittos. Once again, here we are with that nice tucked in bumper that looks like something that would come out of a custom shop.